Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to part two of the adrenal gland. And we left off uh, last time mentioning about adrenal hemorrhage, so let's get started with adrenal hemorrhage. Adrenal hemorrhage is a very interesting thing. High attenuation on non-contrast studies can be unilateral or bilateral. Over time, the gland can atrophy and calcify, although I've seen many cases where it remains large with rim calcifications. It's more common in females than men. As we mentioned, it can be unilateral or bilateral. When it's bilateral, it can result in adrenal insufficiency and Addisonian crisis. Particularly in those cases, the challenges patients present in very different ways. You essentially never see a requisition that says rule out adrenal hemorrhage, typically. You typically have acute abdomen, myocardial infarction, sepsis. And so we'll talk about that. Etiologies, underlying tumors, so occasionally metastasis or primary tumors can bleed. That's pretty rare. Patients on anticoagulant therapy, that's becoming less common as people are being managed better, but that's a possibility. Patients with trauma, common, particularly associated liver or renal lacerations, and typically it's right-sided trauma, so right adrenal involvement. We talk about infection. We talk about hypercoagulability states. We talk about stress. The appearance, classic case, trauma. You can see there's blood in the abdomen, the patient had surgery. Round, oval, right adrenal, it's enlarged and it's high density. Classic for adrenal hemorrhage. This article, the most common imaging features include a three centimeter oval hematoma, a regular hemorrhage obliterating the gland, periadrenal hemorrhage or fat stranding, and uniform adrenal swelling with increased attenuation. So it kind of is a range of appearances, but to me, the high density and oval appearance, often with stranding, is the most crucial. People talk about trauma in about 5% of blunt abdominal cases. It's almost always right adrenal, but it's usually associated with liver and renal injury as well. It's not by itself. And the article goes on talking about the oval, the irregular hemorrhage, a range of findings, but here's just a good example. Very nice example of round, high-density stranding, adrenal hemorrhage, post-trauma. This case, ICU patient, post-brain surgery, couldn't figure out what was going on. They figured it must be sepsis. But here it is non-contrast, round, high attenuation on non-contrast, that's adrenal hemorrhage. When they looked, the patient was Addisonian. Or this case, bilateral, high-density adrenal hemorrhage. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mentioned that occasionally metastasis, mainly lung cancer, patient presents with right upper quadrant pain, big bleed. You lose the adrenal. You also lose the mass. You can't tell where the mass begins and ends. That often happens with hemorrhage. When you see hemorrhage like this, you've got to think about an underlying mass. Now, I will admit occasionally, I showed you myolipoma, you can have bleeding, but this is pretty impressive. And so maybe not going to be perfect at the diagnosis, but in this case, they got a chest CT and there was a lung mass, so it was easier. And in this case, flank pain, this patient had a primary adrenal carcinoma, which was pretty, pretty rare. Now, when you look at things where you make mistakes, this lesion, large right adrenal mass, looks like differential density between the periphery and the center, maybe some calcifications. You have to admit, this could be a carcinoma. It's very oval, and carcinomas at times can be that way. Here it is in coronals. This was an adrenal hematoma. It was an old hematoma. So I've seen now many cases of old hematomas. Sometimes they're really, really large, like this, and they can indeed simulate malignancy. Now, I mentioned calcification a moment ago. Here's very dense calcifications around an adrenal with a patient who had prior hemorrhage. And here's a patient with atrophic adrenals due to prior hemorrhage, bilateral hemorrhage. This patient became Addisonian. Now, you could see bilateral adrenal calcifications like this, small adrenals. If I was just giving you a differential, I can, I can include infection like TB and uh, sarcoidosis, perhaps, blastomycosis. TB is probably the best one. So very dense calcifications. We see this every once in a while. It's interesting, the patients typically don't have adrenal abnormalities at that point, but it kind of is impressive. And here's a more impressive solitary left adrenal hemorrhage, very dense calcification. You can see hemorrhage and you can see calcification rather in many things, 
But that rim calcification like that is not going to be a carcinoma. It's not going to be metastatic. It's not going to be pheochromocytoma. That's sort of a classic appearance for that process. Now, when we talk about size of adrenal lesions, obviously you think for a moment, the bigger it is, the worse it is. Well, regardless of size, when a lesion looks benign on a CT, it's actually likely going to be benign at surgery. Now, one of the other things about taking out large adrenal lesions, particularly when they're painful, is the fact that if a lesion is likely not malignant, then surgeons want to do laparoscopic surgery because of lower complication rate and the like. So it's very important for us to rate whether we think something is going to be benign or malignant. If it's malignant or there's a chance of malignancy, they're going to do an open procedure because if you're thinking about primary adrenal carcinoma, then you want to do an open procedure because you want to be able to sample the nodes. You want a much better field than you can get with simple laparoscopic surgery. But for most things, laparoscopic surgery is so much easier, particularly for the adrenal gland. And there's an article Steve Rowe and uh, Carolina Lugo wrote talking about this and talking about lesion appearance. And here, scenarios in which image-guided biopsy may provide useful information are limited to cases of suspected mesothelial adrenal, for which biopsy material can, can facilitate identification of the original site, but also in cases where you're surely uncertain. This article, Theo and colleagues reported that experienced surgeons can resect adrenals 5CM laparoscopically with surgical outcomes, similar to those associated with smaller tumors, although greater than 8 becomes a challenge laparoscopically. Same article, given a generally accepted increased tumor recurrence risk associated with laparoscopic adrenal resection, open adrenalectomy is the ideal thing. So if you're thinking primary tumor, you have to go with a more aggressive surgery and a wider open field. So that becomes very important. And this article, we showed you very nicely the steps that it took. Here's a laparoscopic left adrenalectomy, and here's a right. Again, different uh, sides, but pretty, pretty good article worth reading if you're interested. Now let's talk about malignant tumors. We talk about metastases being the most common. Primary adrenal carcinoma is rare. Theos are rare. Lymphoma is rare. And neuroblastoma. So let's talk about it. Uh, a routine contrast enhanced CT, adrenal masses with irregular margins or a thick enhancing rim are likely to be malignant. Smooth margins and homogeneous density can be seen in both benign and malignant lesions. Going on, Song makes the point for individual morphologic features, irregular margins up to 33% sensitivity, 96% specificity, enhancing rim 13%, and 98% specificity. So you could see that it can be somewhat tricky. Now again, she goes back to some of the original work, no malignant lesions incurred in patients without a known uh, malignancy. Now I'll tell you, that's usually true, but not always, because sometimes patients have abdominal pain and symptoms, and I find an adrenal mass, it ends up being a MET, but it's the presentation, or it's part of the original workup. So. The patient at that point doesn't have a malignancy, but is about to have a known malignancy. So let's look at malignancies a bit closer. Let's look at primary adrenal carcinoma. It's a rare tumor, fourth and fifth decades, more common in women, and functioning tumors are more common in women. It's rarely bilateral. When you have excess hormonal production, it can be many things, but Cushing's is probably going to be the most common, though it can be almost anything. We talk about presentation. If you're not syndromic, which means you're not having Cushing's or Addisonian, then it's, you present with larger tumors and you present with symptoms like flank pain or fever, maybe symptoms related to the Mets or to hormonal production by the tumor. Up to a third of these tumors have dystrophic calcification. Average size is 9 cm, but it ranges from 3 to 25 and central necrosis and abnormal enhancement are all common. When we do CT, we're looking for staging. We're looking for local extension. We're looking for nodes and vascular invasion. We look for lung mets and bone mets and liver mets. How do the lesions look? Here's a typical example, a large mass, modeled enhancement, 
Often they appear to be well-defined, though you may see nodes. The fact that well-defined looks good but not, does not necessarily mean it's not locally invasive. You can see why you need to do this open. You can see it's pushing on the vein, it's pushing on the artery. There's modeled enhancement present. Here's a few more views of that. And this is very much a classic. You can't look at this and say benign. It's not going to be a pheo. It's not vascular enough. Though occasionally I've seen pheos that are cystic, but this is solid. Could it be lymphoma? Possibly lymphoma is typically bilateral. I'll show you some examples. To me, this is primary adrenal carcinoma until proven otherwise. Another example. Look at this case. Look at the large right-sided adrenal mass pushing on the liver, be pushing on the kidney. It has modeled enhancement, areas of decreased attenuation centrally, more peripheral enhancement. When you get the MIP imaging, you can see the neovascularity. Another example, same thing, right side, big, large mass, dystrophic calcification, central necrosis, peripheral enhancement. Looks relatively well defined, but looks are indeed deceiving. Also, in the lowermost portions of the tumor, there's extensive vascular tumor present, extensive necrosis. Just a really nice example of what you can see with these primary adrenal carcinomas. Could this be a MET? Theoretically, maybe, unlikely. Could this be a lymphoma? They don't enhance like this. So this is primary adrenal carcinoma. There's no if, buts, or maybe. Here's a few more images with essential necrosis as the lesion washes out. Here it is with cinematic rendering showing you the central necrosis, showing you the neovascularity, just a really good look. When adrenal tumors metastasize, as in this case, they go to the liver commonly, and you can see vascular metastasis in this patient. You can see the mass also can infiltrate the mass in the adrenal, but now it's spread and is going perirenal. It's kind of almost drop meds or just direct extension onto the kidney surface. Very nicely seen. The lesions, again, in terms of enhancement, they can be necrotic. Here's a mass. You can see some vascularity. When you follow down, it almost looks cystic with an enhancing rim. Cystic lesions, we always think of cysts, but this is not cystic as in cyst. This is cystic as in necrotic. Again, with simple cysts, there's no enhancing rim, there's no thickened wall. Here, there's thickened wall, and there's enhancement. Differential focuses on primary adrenal carcinoma, again, very much because of its size. And as we scan through this case, you can see solid components. Okay, so adrenal carcinoma occasionally will see smaller lesions if they're hyperfunctioning. All of these are hyperfunctioning, but I guess maybe I should say syndromic. If the patient's cushionoid, they'll present earlier. And that's why we see them more commonly in women at a smaller size. Now, another tumor to think about is primary lymphoma. Now, we talk about lymphoma involving the adrenals, but typically it's multiple organs involved in those cases. Sometimes you may only see the adrenal gland involved. It's fairly uncommon, but it does occur. Adrenal lymphoma tends to be infiltrative, so you maintain the adrenal shape, but it's infiltrating. It can wash out. It's typically not going to be hypervascular, and it's typically not going to have calcifications. And it's kind of interesting when you talk about bilateral adrenal masses, but you have large masses. You know, we talked about the brightness of a lesion, but now I'm telling you big adrenal masses, often adrenal shape, some enhancement, but homogeneous, think of lymphoma. Now, it's not always bilateral. Look at this case. Big nodes by the pancreas. This was initially thought to be pancreatic cancer. These are big peripancreatic nodes. There's a large left adrenal mass. That was lymphoma, just a beautiful example. Here you're seeing primary lymphoma with spread to the adrenal glands, very nicely shown. Again, infiltrating toward the pancreas and nicely shown on 3D. Secondary involvement of the adrenal gland with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, up to 25% of patients during the course of their therapy. Primary adrenal is rare, less than 1%. Some comments, primary adrenal, Elderly men most commonly, median age 65, bilateral in up to, th two th up to three quarters of cases, and about 50% of patients actually develop symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. So again, something to think about. Again, from the appearance, there aren't that many articles. This article is a good one. 
large soft tissue masses replacing the adrenals. Diameter is often over greater than 6 cm. Again, oval and smooth, we people talk about, but also over 10 centimeters. Infiltrate, expand. So again, it's a range of appearances. Obviously, bilateral, it's not going to be primary carcinoma. Primary carcinoma, about less than 3% of bilateral in the big necrotic tumors. Here's a great example. Look at these large bilateral masses. Now, if you ask me what this could be, I would say melanoma as well. Okay, so just to make it specifically a reminder, sometimes METs can simulate lymphoma. But here, big masses, modeled enhancement, yet patient had no melanoma by history, no other malignancy by history, large masses, again, ill-defined, homogeneous, large, somewhat necrotic, here it is in cinematic. I'm giving you all the looks of these tumors. Look how great you can see that. That's going to be a lymphoma. Now you talk about bilateral masses, pheos, commonly, but only about 10% of pheos, infection and lymphoma is right up there in the list. Article by De Sosa more recently, although it is a rare entity, primary lymphoma of the adrenal should be considered in the differential diagnosis of bilateral nodular adrenal lesions. Okay, very, very important. And again, this comment we made before, talking about the fact that these patients indeed may be uh, presenting with adrenal insufficiency. So it's a really interesting diagnosis. It's an unusual diagnosis, but something you need to think about when you see big masses. So big masses to me, lymphoma and metastasis, when I pick mets, particularly when it's not vascular, I'm picking melanoma. So what else about bilateral adrenal metastasis or bilateral, bilateral adrenal masses? Again, a bilateral lesion could be an adenoma, could be hyperplasia, but it could be METs, it could be pheos, it could be lymphoma. So let's see what else it could be. Now I noticed the clock is getting late, so let's just stop for a moment and let's come back and look at bilateral adrenal masses focusing on metastasis. And I'll see you, why don't you get a cup of coffee if you use the, the code word 7462, you'll get a free cup of coffee at the, uh, in the hallway. And see you in a few minutes. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.